Can we just uh, start with an update on Claude? No, uh, just uh, just maintenance day today. He'll be back in tomorrow. Same thing for uh, for Corpy. Just maintenance day for both of them. How do you balance? I know I know you never name your starting goalie in advance, but how do you balance the storyline of, of you know Forsberg's coming home versus hey Corpusal's on a bit of a roll here? Like how do you and Zach balance that? You're going into to, well, we work with the, the goalie coach and, and everyone involved to, to, to make the right decision that gives us the best chance to win, and, and that's what we go with. Yeah, and so you don't factor in, hey, guys. I mean, I, I do. Personally, I always I have relationships with my players, and I think there's some times that, you know, you got to play a guy um, in a certain situation. It's his hometown or whatever. I just think you get a little more out of the guy in that scenario. You said the post game last night to your players that there was lots to learn from last night's game. Upon some reflection. What, what's the main thing? Well, the main thing is <clears throat> we didn't break the puck out at all. Um, you know, and then we, we just got scrambling. We got flipping the puck and we, and, you know, we froze a bit. Um, you know, but the, the positive thing is that in the third period, we were able to get it back on the tracks. We are able to grind away, you know, get ourselves to overtime and find a way to win a game. And that's a hard thing to do when you blow a lead like that. It doesn't happen all the time. Um, you know, we've done it to other teams, come back from, from from you know big deficits, and the momentum gets going the other way, and and uh, you know it was good for our group to to gather themselves between the second and third and go back and play what I thought was a much better third period. DJ, what do you think enabled you guys to get it? Um, I just think uh, you know some of the guys that have, have been through it, been in the league a little bit longer, they understand what we have to do. We have to be way more consistent. Don't get me wrong, um, in that, but. In saying that, they know what works for us, and um, we just went back. Everyone have a good shift, you know, uh, a second good shift, and and you know we did give up a couple chances, and you know, but we easily, you know, if our power play was rolling, could have scored a couple in the third. Um, but it, it for sure is a good sign that you know we didn't just you know fold up and keep playing the way we were playing. We were able to, to get it back and get two points. No, he's fine. He's played. He's just played lots. He'll be fine. Pretty sure you're going to see a hungry Minnesota team tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. And they're going to forecheck and they're going to come after you. So, you know, we, we, we're aware of the style that they play. Um, and we've got to be ultra disciplined. And, you know, if they take penalties, then we have to score on the power play. And then that's, that's as simple as that. You know, if we can break out, um, stay out of the penalty box, um, and, and win the special teams, we give ourselves a chance. Is there something that you're seeing in the second period in particular, outside of the long change, that would explain some of the, the, the issues that you're having in the second period? Well, right right now, the biggest for me is, is that we're not bringing the puck out nearly as much. And then, you know, we're, we're getting disconnected, um, looking for longer plays, whereas the first and third, we're, we're sharing the puck, we're talking, um, and then we're changing in inopportune times. And then they quick up you. We've done it to other teams. Um, when we play good second periods, um, you know, when we're playing at our best, we're quick up and teams are out changing them. Right now, we're getting out changed. Let's start by getting it a rank last night's game-winning goal on a skill level scale. Where would you put Tim's overtime winner? Yeah, it's pretty impressive, you know. Good hand day. Big goal for us. Have you seen anything like that in your career? Goal like that? I've seen guys score from air a few yeah. few times. It's it's uh, very impressive. Your give and go with Jake Sanderson last night on his goal here. Uh, it's as nice a give and go as you can probably get. Can you just describe what you're seeing from Jake as a hockey player and how he's developed? You know, he's young. He's a great defenseman, and uh, he's uh, he'll only get better. He'll only get better with time, and uh, you can see how he have more confidence. You know, every game, and uh, he's very smart too. You know, like even on that given goal, like he find the open space if he sees it, and uh, I think he's uh, he's a great player. Safe to assume that you're really having a lot of fun uh, with this team to start this season. We have a very good group of guys. It's fun to be in a room. Uh, yeah, they gave me the warm welcome and uh, you know treat me well. Your uh, thoughts on the Wild uh, looking ahead to tomorrow? Try to get a win. I guess I think it's. It's cool and fun to play here, you know, it's still uh, important points and we don't really have a great start and you know, every game is kind of big for us, so that's the mindset we have. Uh, you know, I used to play against them a lot of times, so <laughs> we know, like, I know what kind of game it's going to be, they try to play physical and uh, we have to be ready. Did you see the Rolex that Tim got? Did you, huh? Did you see the Rolex that Tim got last night? No, I actually not. 
I'm not a watch player. Not a watch player. No, no. no. <laughs> it's like the coach said after the game that there was lots to learn from that. What would be the main takeaway? Yeah, I mean, uh, in a positive manner, I guess, just sticking with it. Um, you know, we come out to a, a pretty good start, a, maybe a better start than we anticipated. Uh, you never know how these kind of games are going to go. And, and uh, I mean, they're a good team. They're a resilient team on the other side. We know that. they got some firepower. And you can kind of feel like once they got that second one that, uh, you know, something, uh, obviously they had momentum in the game. But I thought uh, as far as the third period, structurally, that's probably as good of a third as we've played in a long time. And I think both teams really just, the ice uh, conditions aren't the best. The boards are uh, about couple feet shorter you see a couple pucks over the glass uh some of the stanchions you don't know where it's going to kick so it almost just felt like guys were uh really bearing down defensively on both sides um and then obviously a world-class goal in the end so um i'm sure everyone here got uh, their money's worth did you go back and watch that highlight anymore uh yeah it's funny uh uh g's kids were over at my house with my kids and uh so we have a video of it uh, of all the kids kind of celebrating together when the goal went in but uh I've seen it a couple times, and I mean, it's uh, it's a it's a pretty impressive uh, uh, goal uh, to be able to stick with it and hit it out of the air like that. But I mean, Timmy's uh, probably one of the most athletic players that that ever came across. So uh, definitely not surprised if someone's going to bat it in. That would be him. So you mentioned at four two, that's when you kind of felt like it started to shift. So what's kind of like going on in the bench? What's the mindset at four two? Well, I mean, I think they just they scored a couple quick ones, right? So it's yeah. uh, you wouldn't really have much time. And I thought that, uh, you know, I, I think it was the second or third one that went up. And I mean, that's just a weird bounce. And they got a couple in the period was ending. So you just want to make sure that you uh, get pushed back and start pushing the, you know, the puck in the play and driving the play in the other direction. I mean, there's there's going to be momentum shifts in games at all times. Uh, you know, we had one right off the start and kind of the whole first period and they had their push in the second. So. Um, not a lot was said. We just we felt like we, when we played our structure in our game, um, we're as good as anybody. So we, we felt that, and we were able to show it in the third period of a good mature period for us to, you know, when you give up the lead like that, uh, um, and you go back and regroup in the in the intermission, you come back for the third. Uh, you, you want to prove it to each other that that you can lock it down and still come out with the two points uh, in any manner that you can. So. Um, to not give up any more and, and really structurally be sound in the third, I thought was impressive. What, what's the biggest challenge right now for this group, just in the second period specifically? Because it does feel like there's a little bit of a pattern lately where it just, I don't know if it's a long change or if it's just uh, um, any... Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't know if I would be able to pinpoint anything. I mean, uh, we've liked our starts, we've liked our finishes, so I guess maybe uh, the second period, as you mentioned. but. Um, you know, I think it speaks more volumes to, to how we're coming out in games and how we're finishing them. So, um, you know, every coach, I've said it before, is probably searching for a full 60, and I feel like uh, as players you always are as well. But uh, the kind of the game is made of momentum shifts one way or another, right? So, um, you know, it seems like if you come out good, the other team's going to have their push. It's just it's naturally kind of how that's going to happen, right? So you want to limit their push when it comes, but uh, our guys stuck with it, and it was a good one. What kind of head, uh, what do you hit, thoughts on the wild? Yeah, a big heavy team. Um, I think they've been over here for a couple days now already, so they're probably really eager to play. They they start last out of everybody, I think. So uh, um, they have good goaltending, they got guys up front that can really put the puck in. They got a big decor um, and, and a lot of big forwards down their lineup that can uh, really get the four checking game, the heavy game going. So I think as uh, units of five on the ice is going to be important for us for, for breaking the puck out, uh, getting back in a hurry so that uh, we can kind of try and beat their forward check with with our breakouts and, and kind of let our forwards have the puck and be able to make the plays down the ice. Team posted a video last night of Tim unboxing a pretty nice gift for being player of the game. Yeah. What's the team reaction as he's opening up that bad boy? Everyone's going to be ready to play tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's honestly everyone's reaction at the start, right? But uh, uh, yeah, exactly. But no, it was, uh, it, was, it was a great gift. It was obviously really nice from the NHLPA and uh, and the NHL to, uh, uh, you know, uh, give a gift. Like we're all very fortunate to, to be over here and, and be able to experience this. Uh, you know, some guys never get to do this at all in their career. So um, to be able to come here and do this just as a gift and obviously for for the league and the Players Association to be recognizing that even on a further level, I think is uh, uh, it's, it's not needed, but certainly well received. And uh, um, I'm sure he'll be wearing it in no time, so.